today we're having an education hack. What that means is we've got students coming in from six schools with great ideas about how you can use technology to support learning. Lots of volunteers from the London Knowledge Lab and from SMEs and startups in London and even some big companies as well, including the BBC, come here to help those students make their ideas into something, to hack, to build, to use technology, to communicate those ideas about how they think technology could help them to learn better in school, at home, wherever they happen to be. It's quite strange and that the concept and process of education hasn't really changed that much in, well, 150 years. What makes this project so special that you travelled so far? It's not that common that you bring together kids and students and teachers and researchers to reinvent their future, reinvent how they want education. That's about it. Let's go have lunch. Are you enjoying what you're doing? Uh, yeah, it's really fun and it's great to work with uh, people who know what they're doing and also my friends. Sometimes. <laughs> so hopefully this, uh, this bit of hardware will help schools to be able to set up a remote monitoring station and then look at all the data back in, in the school. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> There's lots of challenges. Um, member of the communication team. We have some Marbury students and other schools um, taking part of our big project. Um, we have been working with app teams to help them with presenting their designs in the best light. I will introduce them before they explain their project to you. The first group that we will be representing is called YouTube. Um, Sam and Tasneem will talk about it more. Thank you. It is strange that in a world built on adaptation to change, a world where we are supposed to embrace new technology, that one of the most important parts of our society, the education of our children, has not changed in any format majorly for 150 years. However, this can be altered by allowing freer exchange of information to create a more flexible system, putting educations in the students' hands. This is you choose. Most students have strengths in some, in some areas, but lack in others. In the traditional system, they only get equal time. This can result in boredom or difficulties for many. In our system, they, are, they can allocate um, specialized time that they, that they need for the subjects they struggle at. You Choose has a, has a range of resources that allows you to achieve these skills. The technologies used are just integrations of current resources and systems. The principal, sub, the principal technology is one familiar to all, the online, tech, the online table. Timetable. Uh, the timetable. Uh, is something tailored to yourself, enabling you to get an education that meets your needs. Um, if if you press the Friday. if you pr press the Friday button, you get a list of subjects that come up. Yep. Uh, um, and if you press it again, you should get a list of resources that are available. Um, Behind me is what it should look like. Should look like that. Yeah. There. Yes. Um, wait, I um, haven't finished yet. Um, 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 indeed, the future of education, now more than it has ever been, is in your hands. Thank you. The group I'll be presenting are called Connected. They are developing an alternative to ID cards, which can come in the form of a bracelet or a watch, according to your preference. Connected will allow teachers and students to create a better understanding of each other through their concept. And Afsana will explain more. Our concept is called Connected. 
It's a bracelet and a watch given by a school as an alternative to a normal ID card, but has far more functions that benefits every individual within a school in the following ways. Firstly, every bracelet or watch has been implanted with an RFID chip, and this technology enables every student and teacher to locate each other within the school premises. An example of where this could be used... <laughs> What's wrong? Okay. <laughs> An example of where this could be used is during a fire alarm, and in that, time, time, in that space of time, time is of the essence. Connected can be used to make sure that everyone is safe, and this just shows how flexible our concept is to use within the educational system. Secondly, every RFID chip is unique, and this provides users with the opportunity to make a profile page listing your name, age, and strengths that one may have. This is useful to both students and teachers, as students can find other people to help with their issues, and teachers are able to create a lesson plan structured around their pupils' interests. Now, through this process, we have learned that persistence and perseverance are essential to the creation of a concept. We started with the idea of security, and we thought that that can really be placed within the school system. However, using these qualities, persistence and perseverance, we have been able to come up with an innovative and flexible app that will be suitable to use in any educational system. Thank you. Uh, the next group um, have worked on a project called TeacherShare and CalShare. Um, these softwares help students and teachers communicate with each other about their behavior, progress, and organization. Now I'll hand it over to their group. Hi, I'm Sean. And I'm Joe. Oh, we're part of a we're part of a two part application development team. We're going to be talking about our app and then passing over to our um, app development colleagues. Teacher Share is our app. It allows teachers to give feedback to our students about how they are working in class. If the teacher thinks that they are doing well, or if the if the teacher thinks they're working bad in class, then the teacher can give them this feedback. If the teacher thinks the pupil is working. Uh, not to the best of their ability, then they can talk to the student in a confidential chat through our application and tell them how they can do better in class and improve on their grades. This is strictly between teacher and parents, uh, teacher and student, because we believe that parents would just add on pressure to the student. Another function of the app is um, part of the app which students can log in and look at their current attainment grades and seeing uh, how well they're doing if they're exceeding in their work or failing. Another part of it is where um, teachers can talk to students if they're either they've been out of lessons for being in school trips or being playing football games, stuff like that. So they can send them schoolwork or homework and give them help on um, extra parts of it so they don't fall behind on their work. Now we'll be passing over to our colleagues, CalShare, and they could be talking about their app. Um, our app is CalShare, and it helps students and teachers better communicate and be better organized. For a student, it really helps them have all of their activities in one place. They can add calendars that have to do with each of their subjects, so all their assignments are in one place, and they can also have their personal activities and clubs there. We have an added feature where they have reminders for assignments that would be due the next day. For teachers, it helps prevent them from overloading students with homework and overlapping quizzes and tests all into one day. It also helps them coordinate and connect their classes and overall enhance the learning environment. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, my name is Sam, and um, I had the original idea for the eDiary. The eDiary is a mobile application, currently with a prototype for Android, but uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> the eDiary is effectively a student's planner on their phone, with the capabilities to store their timetables, homework. It would also have the abil ability to store utilities. We have also created a virtual learning environment. This effectively allows teachers to set homework on their smartphone or on a computer, 
and then the students can do it at home in groups. So that means that you don't have to constantly plan to meet up with your friends and then not do any work because you've found a new computer game. Uh, if it, um, this app would help pro productivity because it saves time. This will mean that the students won't need to get out their planner from their bag, read it, and then put it back in, which quite often makes people late for lessons. Uh, the utilities will include things like dictionaries, translators, and a calculator. These will be downloaded separately as add-ons, so you, know, you only get the ones you want. Uh, we had a lot of fun making this app. There were um, a few funny moments and a few annoying moments, especially when six hours of work didn't work. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, the next team have been working on a system called REMS. There were nine members of this team and it is a uh, system about making it easier to collect uh, data. Now I'm going to hand it over to Hugo from REMS to tell you more about it. Hi, I'm Hugo. The remote environmental monitoring system, REMS, tagline the geographer's dream, <laughs> allows uh, pupils to collect better and longer term data, both uh, when studying microclimates on the school campus or on field trips to the Lake District. So um, it's composed of two halves, an array of sensors that will allow uh, pupils to collect uh, data about light levels, temperature, wind speed, wind direction, uh, barometric pressure, the list goes on. The other half is a feedback system that takes the data from those sensors and converts it into a graph that uh, can then be accessed by the uh, pupil from their school computers. So uh, the video you're about to see will show um, our precipitation uh, measurement. Uh, as the um, water is poured into a, uh, a lid, it detects that, uh, that a certain amount of water is being poured in. It will then um, tip it out and register that that amount has been rained on the apparatus. So as you can see, the data then changes on the computer. The other device is a uh, wind speed measurer, um, which will, uh, uh, which, um, measures the uh, number of revolutions per minute made by the cups and thus uh, the speed of the wind. So uh, again, that data is fed back to the computer. And um, although we weren't able to demo it at the time of the video, uh, that the video was taken due to time constraints, uh, we've now set up software that will allow us to convert that to a very professional looking graph on a computer, purely over a Wi-Fi network. So completely wirelessly, uh, uh, that means that a student on a field trip can set up one of these devices on a remote moor, for instance, and then back at school, watch a live updating graph, uh, getting feedback from the instruments that they planted. We worked on it in two teams, one coding um, the uh, feedback system and one actually making and coding for the sensors. It was a, uh, it was, uh, we went through ups, some ups and downs, but in the end, we, uh, we did learn a lot about uh, coding and we had to think on our feet. Um, to create uh, this uh, um, rather amazing uh, piece of software. Uh, we, uh, I, was, I was actually surprised by how much we managed to achieve. We ended with uh, six or seven sensors all feeding back data. And uh, one boy had to spend uh, the whole of yesterday and last night uh, managing to code the barometric pressure sensor. So um, it took a lot of effort, but I think the rewards uh, more than justified. Okay, and last but not least is the group called LAPS. Um, this, act this, this app is actually a game which helps students learn at, um, without realizing they are. Now Alex will talk more about this. Well, okay, yeah, that's better, but hidden learning through gaming. Historical characters are all dead. Why does it matter? It matters because history repeats itself. This is the, missing, the message we are trying to get across with LAPS. It's a time travel computer game which will help students improve their knowledge of history, literature, maths, and science. LAPS creates virtual environments where students time travel to historical stories or events which have influenced society today. In the game, pupils can inhabit characters that can change the course of events to investigate how different outcomes could have affected the world we live in now. Time travel quests include, in development include Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet and Einstein's Manhattan Project. Using Unity software, we have worked with 
games designers to make prototypes, which can be e eventually made available on the web, and eventually uh, on Steam, which is a popular gaming platform. Outside, we are demoing it, like showing off what we can do. Thank you. Brilliant. So that's what they've been working on, and there are demos outside. You can go and see for real, because in these short presentations, you can't see the... I don't want to say very much. All I wanted to say was that these students and their teachers and all the helpers have been absolutely amazing for the last two days. We have achieved so much. In the kind of terms we use to reward people at the moment, this is a triple A star. They are astounding. They are ambitious. They are awesome. And they are amazing. We are so often asked today how technology can change teaching and learning. It's the wrong question. The question we need to now ask is how teachers and learners can change the technology that supports the way that they learn. And this is a demonstration of that in action. So big round of applause, please, for these amazing students. <laughs>